So today we're going to talk about how SIBO can steal your nutrients. SIBO is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, okay? And basically that is this. Normally your flora, your good friendly bacteria should be in the large intestines right through here. But when it gets into the small intestines, it becomes this. And what happens is when you eat, these microbes start fermenting carbohydrates. They start eating up your nutrients, uh, especially B12, iron, and bile. So bloating, abdominal pain, and gas are just one side effect. But a bigger side effect is the nutritional deficiencies. So when you're deficient in B12, you can have all sorts of things uh, from serious neurological issues, uh, shooting, stabbing pain, to anemia, and the list goes on and on and on. And then iron, anemia, fatigue. And then when you're deficient in bile, you no longer can digest your fats and you can't extract fat-soluble vitamins. So you become deficient in vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and vitamin K, as well as essential fatty acids. And there's so many symptoms that are associated with those uh, nutrients. So what causes SIBO? Well, it could come from many different things. One being uh, some complication after surgery because they uh, structurally altered your digestive system. And sometimes that physical alteration allows the bacteria to escape going backwards into the small intestine where you have this huge problem. It could also come from not having enough stomach acid. Normally in the stomach, the pH should be between one and three. This is very, very acidic. And one of the big purposes of having a really strong acidic stomach is to kill off microbes. So if you don't have that acid, the microbes that come from the food go into the stomach and invade the small intestine and start to multiply and start living down here. All right, so now what do you do about this condition? Number one, you need to increase the acidity of your stomach. Very, very important. I would start with something called betaine hydrochloride. You can get them in pills. I would take at least five before each meal. I would also take apple cider vinegar as well on a regular basis. You can even get pills that combine apple cider vinegar powder with betaine hydrochloride and take them together. That will start helping this area right here. Number two, you wanna do intermittent fasting. This gives your digestive system a chance to reset and clean out some of the food for the microbes and allow the transit time and the food to kind of get through down into the small intestine through here. Now, one of the things that happens when you do intermittent fasting is you have this kind of this washing effect of the food back into the large intestine, which happened from these little cilia hairs. So you get this cleaning effect if you can do intermittent fasting long enough. Very, very important compared to eat, eating so frequently. If you're not doing intermittent fasting, I believe you can never fully handle uh, this condition. Next thing is to avoid prebiotics, and I'm talking about fiber. Do not consume fiber, and I'm talking about vegetables as well, for at least a month to six weeks, because guess what? These microbes live on that fiber. They'll ferment the fiber and you'll get gas. And that also goes for probiotics. Don't take probiotics because we're trying to avoid adding more bacteria. You already have too much bacteria and the microbes that are in there don't like to be in there and you have unfriendly ones as well. So this huge competition. And definitely don't consume something that combines both of these, a pre and a probiotic together. That would be like sauerkraut. That would really create a bloating effect. The last thing I would recommend is uh, some type of herbal antibiotic. I mean, you can do oregano, thyme, clove, garlic, and that will create an environment that's very antimicrobial. So that's what you want. So in summary, I wanted to emphasize that this condition is actually way more common than you might think. And number two, one of the big problems with this condition is the nutrition deficiencies that a lot of people don't realize that could be creating symptoms that you're not aware of. So those nutritional deficiencies are not coming because you're not eating certain foods. They're coming because the microbes are actually eating them up and they're not giving them to you. Now, there's a lot more to this condition as far as getting tests to determine if you have it or not. I put some links down below for some additional information. Let's talk about the unique difference between the small intestine and the large intestine or the colon. Over here, we have the small intestine. So you have the stomach, small intestine. It connects with through a valve, ileocecal valve, and then the food goes through the large intestine. One thing to know about the small intestine, it's a lot longer. There's three parts. The first part is about a little more than a foot. It's between 10 and 15 inches. 
The next part is about eight feet. And the last part is between eight feet and 13 feet. So it's quite long. Now the colon or the large intestine is about five feet. So let's start with the small intestine. 90% of all the digestion occurs in the small intestine. Now you have enzymes that are generated from the pancreas, and you also have enzymes that are generated from the small intestine itself to help break down proteins, carbohydrates, and fat, minus the fiber. Our bodies do not have the capacity to break down fiber. We just don't have the enzymes. However, we have a lot of microbes in the large bowel that can ferment the fiber and break it down, and that's converted to uh, some really healthy things, which we'll get to. Now, in the first part of the small intestine, you have the contents of the stomach and also some of the juices from the pancreas coming out to help neutralize all the acid from the stomach. So we have a lot of digestion happening right here. We also have the absorption of iron. When someone gets surgery, as in a gastric bypass, um, they may have difficulty absorbing iron. Now, this next part is where you're going to absorb the calcium, the magnesium, uh, some B vitamins, vitamin C, folate, and there's other nutrients as well, like trace minerals. And in the last part, you're going to absorb and recycle bile salts. So 90% of all the bile salts will be reabsorbed. You're also going to absorb B12. You're going to absorb fat and the fat-soluble vitamins, as well as certain electrolytes. So 90% of all the digestion occurs in the small intestine. Now it's alkaline, which actually triggers certain enzymes. Now, if you have inflammation in the colon or Let's say you have celiac, which is damaged within the lining right through here uh, because you've consumed uh, gluten, which you're sensitive to, you're not gonna be able to absorb certain nutrients. Also, most of the friendly bacteria are in the large intestine, not the small. But when the microbes from the large intestine back up and get into the small, that's called SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And in that situation, these microbes are gonna pretty much compete with these nutrients. They're gonna eat up these nutrients, eat up your fuel, and you're gonna have nutritional deficiency. You're gonna have a lot of bloating, and that's called SIBO. I put a video down below if you want more data on that. So let's move to the large intestine. So the contents from the small intestine now are gonna enter through a little valve right here, ileocecal. It's gonna start going through this larger space, which is the colon, and the fiber is gonna to start to ferment. You're also going to get um, water absorption, fluid absorption, absorption of electrolytes, salts, potassium, which is an electrolyte. But we have a lot more bacteria going on in the large intestine. You also have a large mucus layer. So if the surface of the coal is right here, we have a layer of mucus and the microbes are on top of that. Now the pH of the colon is going to be more acidic from certain bacteria um, that are making lactic acid. And the purpose of that acid is to kill pathogens that should not be there, and, but not affect our good bacteria. Now, when this fiber is fermented, uh, where you have these microbes releasing enzymes to break down this carbohydrate, it's gonna turn into small chain fatty acids. And one is called butyrate. And butyrate actually is a preferred fuel for the colon cells, even over glucose. Butyrate also helps stabilize your blood sugars, it will give you energy, and it will improve insulin resistance. All right, thanks for watching, and definitely watch the next video on this page that goes more in depth on the entire cycle of digestion. Hey, before you go, if you're benefiting from any of my content, I would love to hear about your success story. Please share it in the link down below.